What is going on, guys? The day of the week, of course, needing no introduction. Welcome back to uh, Velocity Lake, and we're going to be building a roller coaster, not just in this episode, but over the next few episodes. Well, I guess, to be very pedantic, we're going to be building the roller coaster track and layout itself in this episode, and over the next few weeks, we're going to be doing all of the custom supports, station, theming, and then eventually the surrounding area and flat rides and all that good stuff. Yes, it is time to do the RMC hybrid that I mentioned last episode, uh, and we're finally doing something with this awkward patch of land, which again, I've said, has been uh, something of a bane on my... Uh, existence really but whilst building this park but I finally settled on a roller coaster design that I really like. I went through quite a few different coasters. Um, I tried to find like a collection of footage to show you some of the iterations I went through but I think I deleted a lot of the raw footage to help save on my hard drive space. Uh, however at the end of last week's episode if you missed it I did showcase one kind of finalist that uh, very nearly became the coaster in this area. It was a Drakenfire expired arrow... Eh, Draken fired, Draken fire inspired. Wow, that's a really hard set to say. Draken Draken fire inspired uh, aerodynamics looping coaster. But in the end. I just didn't like the look of it. It looked a bit too messy because uh, it's an aerodynamics coaster. I didn't really like the kind of clean aesthetic and the modern look that I kind of wanted this park to really embellish. I guess it would have been fine for a back of park thing, but for the front entrance, you know, we're right by the, uh, the car park, the monorail from the hotel runs right past this. I wanted this to be a somewhat uh, of a visual spectacle. And I think RMCs really do kind of meet that requirement. Now, I'm not really doing many custom supports because I value my sanity for one thing, you know, wooden coaster supports are very, very difficult to do. However, you may notice that the lift hill itself has no supports at all. We're going to be doing custom RNC supports for that lift hill uh, in a fashion very similar to Zadra and that other one in America, what I forgot the name of, possibly Colossus. I probably should do some research before doing these commentaries, but hey-ho, I don't. Let's move on. Uh, you guys will probably, if you type in Zadra, you know, that's the, uh, the one of the new RMCs recently opened in Energylandia, I believe is the name of the park, in Poland, near Krakow. Uh, Krakow, even. <laughs> I always, like, have to second-guess myself before I say the name of that city, which has come up a couple of times in this series somehow. Uh, and then I think, right, it's, it's actually not how you think it's pronounced, but I have now trained myself to think it's pronounced Krakow. So then I think, oh, it's not how you pr pronounce it, so then I'm saying Krakow, which is how everyone mispronounces it wrongly. So I've kind of come full circle, really. Now, one of the features, moving on, one of the features of RMCs is they tend to have these, it's almost like a zero G roll, but uh, it ends up staying upside down for a long time. The official name of this element is a stall, and a feature of the uh, ground up designed RMCs, as in not retrofits, is they tend to sort of loop right underneath the lift hill, and then they kind of share a uh, structural support. It looks really, really cool, and it's really, really iconic, and it's a feature I really wanted to have because, you know, I was saying, you know, I wanted this to be a really kind of uh, visual phenomenon for guests walking in. It's a really, really cool thing to see, the uh, RMC stall below the lift hill. I thought it'd be a perfect feature for guests to see as they approach the park. So that's what I'm going with here. It was easier said than done. You know, it was pretty hard to get things lined up correctly without... Uh, the stall passing diagonally underneath the lift hill. It needs to pass kind of perpendicular to the lift hill, like par or parallel to the lift hill, I should say. Yeah, not not perpendicular, not perpendicular. Do you do you speak English, Matt? Speak English? Do you speak it? No, I, I do not speak English. And now we're getting to... We've just deleted the stall. As you can see, it took a lot of reiteration, so it's going to be difficult for me to talk about exactly what I'm doing on screen because I'll be building stuff, then deleting it, then building stuff again. I've tried to cut out the most egregious examples of me building something for ages and then deleting it, but there are certain things that I decided to leave in just so you can kind of see the general creative process. And, you know... Actually, no, that was it. I wanted to showcase the uh, process that I go through when it comes to designing track layouts because, I don't know, I used to always um, cut out all the stuff where I'd build something and then decide I didn't like it and just remove it again, except in cases where it was literally too much for me to remove. For example, on the B&M, re the red B&M sit-down. But in general, I will always delete footage where I don't end up using the track that I build. But 
I don't know. I think it doesn't really. It's not really representative of how I build coasters. And I think it's nice. You know, I, I don't do many episodes in this series that are dedicated to the construction of roller coasters because in Planet Coaster scenery by far takes much much longer than building tracks themselves. So I thought, you know, we don't do that many roller coaster building episodes. When we do, I think it'd be good to kind of showcase the entirety of the build, not just kind of the bits that made the cut. I don't know. I mean, do you guys like that? You guys might disagree with that philosophy, but. You know, that's what I'm thinking there. Now, I'm showing a quick POV. It's not played at real time. It's about one and a half, two times normal speed. So, you know, it doesn't drag on too long because there'll be a complete POV at the end. But this is just kind of a showcase of what I'm doing so far. RMCs tend to be very kind of whippy. They tend to be way whippy when they're <laughs> transitioning between elements. They don't tend to be that... Well, they're, they're smooth, but they're... Um, they're rough at the same time. They're not like B&Ms, which are very smooth, very kind of... Uh, I don't really know a good synonym for smooth because that's what I was looking for there. But B&M is very smooth. RMCs are also smooth, but also rough. You know, no, but actually, yes. Uh, meme is what I'm thinking there. So, you know, the transitions between elements are pretty, like, quick. And the actual lift hill, and this is something I probably didn't do a particularly good job of. The lift hill tends to be much, much taller than all the other hills. You know, a lot of coasters, the first hill, there obviously are exceptions like Phantom's Revenge is the big one. The first hill is the biggest, and then the second hill is almost as big as the first hill, but not quite. RMCs, again, the roundup ones, not necessarily the retrofits, it tends to be a massive first drop, and then all the others are very small, in, so that the actual uh, speed of the coaster is very, very high throughout the entire ride. Like, look at Steel Vengeance. The first drop on Steel Vengeance is huge compared to the rest of the compared to the rest of the ride. At least, you know, when you're comparing it to other roller coasters, I suppose. So that's something that might be worth considering if you're designing your own RMC, or at least trying to go for one that's realistic compared to ones that are built now. RMC do tend to uh, break ground when it comes to designing the layout of rides. So, you know, maybe they'll end up breaking tradition again. But at least if we're going for one that's comparable to RMCs that exist in the world at the moment, maybe that's something to uh, aim to emulate. Here's another quick uh, four times speed this time POV of what we're doing so far. It's not a particularly long layout. I think Steel Vengeance is longer. I don't actually know. I didn't actually check the actual length in meters slash feet of this coaster and compare it to other RMCs. But... I was happy with the length of this ride. I, I was I was content with what we had, so I just decided to try and bring it back to the station, which again was easier said than done. I was trying to get things smooth, didn't have any kind of awkward s bends or kind of wobbling in the track to get it on on course to the station. So uh, that's what I was modifying and tweaking there. Anyway, I think I've I've said my piece about the construction of this ride. I can't think of many other things to say. I guess. I could mention the fact that I'm not doing the 4 meter smoothing technique this ride for a couple of reasons. Uh, obviously, the last roller coaster we built, the, uh, I guess, retroactively renamed Industrial Revolution coaster, was built using the 4 meter smoothing technique. Oh, here's another POV, by the way, played at two times speed. It's not quite normal speed, but not quite, you know, super fast. You can't really tell what's going on. Uh, but yeah, for those that don't know, 4 meter smoothing is when you build the roller coaster out of just the 4 meter pieces, as in, you know, the smallest pieces you have available to you. And uh, basically, it's a very arduous process. You end up with a really rough and horrible ride. You then highlight 4 pieces and then press smooth once. Select the next 4 pieces, as in like one notch along, not just the next 4 completely separate pieces. If that makes sense, just watch the uh, construction videos of the previous roller coaster if you're not quite sure and want some clarification. But yeah, like I said, I'm not doing that again for a couple of reasons. First of all, the RMC coaster in this game, the uh, Iron Wolf, is it? there's two of them, so you know what I mean. This coaster here tends to smooth pretty well without needing 4 meter, especially for this kind of layout that I'm doing. And also, I really could not be bothered. Like, it was so mentally exhausting to do a roller coaster entirely out of 4 meter smoothing pieces. I just wanted a break from the 4 meter method really. I think in retrospect I probably should have done the stall on this coaster using 4 meter and all the rest using the conventional planet coaster builder. But I didn't, so let's just accept that and move on with our lives. Uh, and like, oh, this bit was done with 4 meter actually, but then again it's a very small element. <laughs> that little undulation just before that lift hill. Uh... Yeah, I don't know, 4 meter smoothing, it's it's kind of very necessary for some rides, others you can kind of get away with it without it. For example, uh, the aerodynamic coasters, for example, so the American Looper, I believe, and I guess to a lesser extent things like the Vekoma Boomerang and the aerodynamics hypercoaster, I think it's called Equalizer in this game. 
they don't really need it. Uh, I, I touched upon this last episode as well, actually, very briefly, that aerodynamics coasters, uh, obviously, they're now a defunct breed of roller coaster. Uh, they're very rough. You know, they're not very smoothly built. Having the kind of rough transitions of the stock planet coaster builder without using four meter actually is probably a more realistic way of building them than, you know, using the four meter smoothing technique. Four meter smoothing will get you a smoother overall like ride. And I guess the transitions between things like corkscrews and helixes will be a bit more realistic. But other than that, you know, generally just transitioning from he- like corners to straights and hills and stuff, it's probably more realistic to build aerodynamics coasters without smoothing at all and just using the normal planet coaster builder with angle snap enabled so rides like that probably you don't need to do the four meter smoothing and stuff like the rmc hybrids work well enough in my experience without four meter like yeah it would probably be better with four meter smoothing but i was happy with how this came out so i'm not gonna you know lose too much sleep i guess because the rmc coasters have such unconventional elements when it comes to things like corners like a lot of their like uh, high speed turns bank the wrong way so you get thrown out of the seat so I guess because it's less conventional it's harder for me to see if it's smooth or not and like I say the transitions and just general elements of these rides whilst smooth tend to be quite rough and whippy in their transitions and just overall pace of the ride so there's there's that I don't know if any of this really makes sense or if you agree with it but that's kind of the disjointed uh, twisted logic I come up with when justifying my uh, corner cutting time saving corner cutting techniques because you know time uh, I don't really have that much time to uh, work on planet coaster or Kerbal space program as mu- not as much as I'd like and these days uh, I ju- I've just bought the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare which I was very much against buying because uh, obviously, I don't want to support Activision Blizzard, especially in view of the Hong Kong protests. Uh, Free Hong Kong, I don't know if I needed to clarify that I support the Hong Kong protests, because of course I do. Um, so it's nice knowing you guys. My channel's going to get taken down now. Um, but yeah, I didn't want to support them for that reason. And also, just Call of Duty itself has just been like so... I'm just so jaded by it. Like, I played Black Ops 3 and it was just awful. Like, it was so cartoonish. Uh you basically, I, in my experience, I, you just couldn't use keyboard and mouse because using a controller gave you auto aim, and it was just such a massive advantage to have the auto aim. It was so strong. Where like I would just lose repeatedly using keyboard and mouse, but when I switched to my Xbox 360 controller, I would just dominate. So that was just seemed a bit weird that that would be the case, and just the game was just not very fun. I don't know. It was just it was just weird. So I was very and obviously you know the whole loot box controversy shenanigans of Call of Duty World War Two and just in general, COD World War Two just seemed a bit desperate, didn't it? After Battlefield One, so I was not going to get Modern Warfare. However, my friend got Modern Warfare, and then I had to build a new computer for uh, the office, and I bought an RTX card, an RTX 2060, and that just came with a free copy of Modern Warfare. So I'm like, well, it's free. So eh, I guess I'll just redeem it and see what it's like. And it's actually really fun. I actually am really enjoying it. It feels very reminiscent of the old school Call of Duties. Um, like I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with it. It feels very, very fun. So, you know, you got to accept that it's COD. You know, you're going to die every few deaths because everyone has no health and it takes like two hits to kill someone. But I guess that's the same for CSGO. I don't know. For killing like an hour or so, it's pretty fun. So I guess going back to the subject of me not having much free time. That's certainly taken a bit of a dent in it because, by golly, I, I'm giving myself some free time away from YouTube administrative work. So that's what I've been doing. And that's that's what I've been doing in my free time. Playing a bit of, playing a bit of the new Call of Duty, uh, kicking back. I've been upgrading my computer somewhat, as in I've, I've replaced the hard drives in it. So I haven't really upgraded the computer as such in ways that you might find interesting. I've had these two Toshiba 5 terabyte drives in there for a while. That's where I write all my YouTube data to because YouTube data, as in raw gameplay footage, takes up an obscene amount of hard drive capacity. And recently, well, one of them, the connections were a bit bent. So it was really janky whenever I had to take it out of the case for whatever reason. The other one started making these horrendous grinding noises whenever I have to write to it. So I'm like, ah, it's probably going to die and I'm going to lose all my data, which is all of Velocity Lake that I haven't uploaded yet. So I don't want that. So I replaced it with a couple of drives. I got a WD Black 6 terabyte drive 
for uh, actually recording footage to and using it. And then for the backup drive, I bought another Western Digital a gold drive that's 12 terabytes. That'll be like the archival drive. So footage that I'm kind of using as a backup but don't actively need. And I've got a uh, sort of server in my house away from the PC itself just for like backing up my standard drives. And you know, I do a bit of shadow play backup if I need to. Anyway, that's pretty much the layout of the roller coaster done. I'm just tweaking around with colors, trying to decide on a color scheme I like. Uh, I don't end up going with this kind of blooded stool red just there i ended up going with uh, this nice blue color i don't think i've ever seen an rmc this shade of blue before i know twisted colossus has a blue track not quite this shade granted but it has a blue track nonetheless uh but i've never seen an rmc with blue support so i decided to go with that however i didn't record a pov with this new color scheme in place so i'm quickly reverting back to the old one just to show you the pov i am still maintaining the commentary because uh, there was no audio on this footage, so I thought my voice might be better than silence. You might disagree, but then again, you may want to just mute the video if you feel that way. If you really feel that way, guys. Anyway, here comes the stall. Oof, that little dip there. Pulls quite a few vertical Gs. I think it was like 7 or 8 G. We do end up fixing that some way down the line. Unfortunately, not for a while, I think, but it will get fixed. So, in case any of you are a bit of a stickler for vertical g-forces being realistic that corner was a bit high i think all the rest is fairly within the realm of normal limits though so sorry with that so that bit there that sort of tunnel underneath the track the track itself above it was kind of floating so we'll need to do some custom support work there custom supports for the lift hill all of that good stuff and of course the things like the station transfer track we're going to do that next episode so i hope you look forward to it you may have noticed on screen there are some links on the left hand side as a link to the full Velocity Lake playlist. On the right was one chosen for you by YouTube's recommendation Elves. There's also a link to subscribe and check out Patreon if you would like to. And in the description you'll find links to Twitter, Discord, uh, Instagram, merchandise, all that good stuff. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday, my dudes.